up, good agents? It's Tristan and Dan. Good job, Dan. Thanks for putting this together. And we've got Matt Brown from Oregon. But I have no idea where the hell in Oregon you're, you're at, dude. Is it Portland? Portland. <laughs> I should have just read your hat. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I work both Oregon and Washington, but I'm based out of Portland. Nice. So you're like right there next to Vancouver then, right? Oh, right. yeah. I love it, dude. All right, so Matt Brown's got the sickest brand I've seen. You know what? It's probably the sickest brand of real estate agents I've seen in, in, in all of Portland, dude. You got a really good following. Yeah. For I, those of you who don't know Matt Brown, he's got a, a, he's got a really nice brand called Live Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Want to take a, take a look at his Instagram. He's got 18,000 followers. And really, really active. People, people love him. He's got a – dude, you, I, I saw your video this morning, too. I don't know if you saw that I gave you some love, too. So, to take yeah. a look at that. But let's talk about branding because a lot of people just throw up stuff on Instagram and social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. And I, I feel like there's no, there's no process or system that – that, that really can, can help elevate their game. Because on the other side, Matt, the consumer's looking at it, right? Yeah. And then if they don't see some type of consistency or something that they can relate with, you're going to lose them. And that's why I love looking at, at, at all your stuff. I'm looking at it right now, and I'll sh we'll show it a little later. But it looks like it's always the same colors. Yeah. When, I, when I talked to you or when I, I met you in person, what, about a month ago or so? Yeah. Yeah, and... Um, I saw you then, I see you now, dressed very similarly, right? So you're not going to surprise me and wear a freaking suit. So I love that. Well, <laughs> I, I might for special occasions. <laughs> okay. Like if somebody's getting married or if somebody died. Yeah. Or um, if I'm representing another broker and they ask me to, I will. Uh, oh, you know, okay. I try to do as many favors as I can. And sometimes um, the tattooed Matt Brown showing up like this doesn't work for everybody. <laughs> Sometimes. If, it's my, if it's on my time, I dress like I dress in black. You're so funny, dude. So funny. All right. So tell us how you got started, man, because a lot of agents that are listening in or that are going to see this on replay, they're going to be asking, well, you know, I, I want to post and I want to grow my audience to be this big. Uh, where, where would somebody start on the branding? Because People just throw stuff out there. Like I said, where would you start? What would you recommend? Hey, do this first and then do this. Right. So I, I think the, the first thing that happened for me when I actually decided like, okay, I'm going to brand, brand myself and step away from the traditional real estate model. The, the first thing that I did was I said, what would make it fan worthy? What would make me excited about that? Because when you think about our industry, it's, pretty boring i mean like from the, if you're just a consumer and you're looking at it there's people's faces on park benches there's people's faces on every business card under the sun look, with a picture that's 20 years old but like what like could you imagine nike trying to do some crap like that like Dude. you'd be super confused <laughs> and you definitely want to be a fan yeah and that's what that's that's kind of the basis of everything um for me it was if, if I was going to open a, a brick and mortar store, so my background is a small business owner. Um, I, I was in sales for many, many years. I, I didn't prefer the traveling so much. Um, so I started putting in businesses in Portland that I wanted to have um, and wanted to see here. In that process, I didn't quite think about that when I started in real estate. I thought, well, do what, do what all the legends do. Wow. Mimic them. So I was wearing three-piece suits every single day and driving myself bonkers and having my clients and my friends go, dude, you don't need to dress like that. Um, so that started the process for me, which right. was what would, what would it take to make me a fan of a real estate company enough that I would not only wear their stuff, but I would tell people, hey, you got to check this out. It makes sense. And I think, man, just so – you you can relate with me here and and maybe a whole bunch of other real estate agents uh or or any actually any vertical in sales 
when we go in sales, like you went into real estate and I did, one of my first coaches was Mike Ferry, right? And Mike's like, you got a, you know, tie, suit, and vest if you've got one, and it's just to the T. And I always felt a little uncomfortable. Plus, I got a little fatter and my suits didn't fit. I was like, I didn't want to have to keep on buying the suit. So I was like, you know what? Who am I? But I think it's a common, it's a common, uh, it's a common challenge we all go to and we, we emulate who we think we need to be, right? Until we find ourselves, right? Well, ask you, you know, ask the question, you know, what's, what's sexier, uh, period, somebody who uh, shows up and they're dressed a certain way, but they're super uncomfortable or somebody who is just confident and, and they know their business, they know what they're doing and they, they're not looking for your personal approval of how they look. They're just here to serve. And I think that that was a huge chunk of it. Uh, people, I still get this. People go, well, what about the luxury market? How are you going to deal with that? And I go, I'm sorry. What I've realized is the more wealth, the less they care they, uh, about how you look. They really, really care about how confident you are, though. Exactly, dude. It, it all comes down to whether or not they feel like you can take care of their home and them, right? That, right. There needs to be that trust. It doesn't matter how you dress for most of them, which is right. good. The other thing, too, for me personally, it was a little bit different because I had already had a career in another field where I was very well known. And so um, when people talk uh, in Portland about coffee, inevitably my name comes up in the game. And a lot of people say, oh, you mean the real Matt Brown. And so there was an association already with who I am and what I'm going to be a part of. And I had to do some reconciling of that as well. I'm not the guy in the suit and everybody in the city knows it. Um, and that actually worked to my advantage, but I was scared, very scared to just go all in. So if you look at my Instagram early on, I wasn't actually posting hardly any pictures at all um, of myself anyways, because I was kind of on sure of that as well. Let me take a look here on your Instagram here so people can take a look at what it looks like. Tell me when you get to see it here. Is it something that takes a little bit? We can see it. You can see it? Yeah. All right. So uh, you can see here um, towards, uh, well, he's got a great name, dude. How did you end up picking your name? It's not you, right? You didn't right. do like, dude, I'm going to do Matt Brown. Right. How did you end up picking Live Pacific Northwest? Well, it kind of plays to a, another philosophy of mine, which is how do I get you know, people on board. So past just fans, how do I get other brands to want to participate in what I'm doing? And okay. so who's going to, you know, you're not going to see Stumptown Coffee Roasters uh, with my name next to it. And we did an event together. Um, they, they needed to line up with their brand as well. And so I started thinking about what's, what's the most important thing um, to the demographic that I'm looking for in Portland. Number one, it's the experience of it all. People, are here to live a certain type of lifestyle. And I think it's very specific to Pacific Northwest, right? So yeah. I always say, you know, if there's anything that I can do, it's to help you live your life better. So that's sort of how I ended up with Live Pacific Northwest. Could not believe that the domain was available. Lucked Dude, out on that. That's a, that's a really good name. I love that. When I first met you a month ago and you told me the name, I was like, oh, that's a, that's kind of a badass name, dude. I love that. So, you picked the logo. The that those are the mountains with um, what is that like a, a little sunset going down or, or what yeah. is that? Yeah. So my original logo actually the right at the base of the mountains had a house, and we did a lot of good work with it, and and people they responded very well. But the real truth is, folks don't. Uh, they don't identify with houses, so they're not going to put it on their stuff. Of course not. Yeah, they, they want to, like you said at the very beginning, you're creating fans here, right? Yes. You want yeah. the consumers to love, love this. And I think that, stu that stands out really above anything else for me with what you said, because you're coming in, you're coming into this with a different mindset than most people. You're creating something more long-term rather than, and, and look, 
Dude, I, I see I go through and I see the same colors and I see the same type of patterns, right? At the very bottom, I get the right information. I know it's what city and state, right? Because you do cover Vancouver, you said too. Oh, yeah. yeah. And all the way out to the coast and up to the mountains. Love that. Good quality pictures. I see there uh, you put something on IGTV. This is good. So if people are, people are looking at this, how did you determine how often you're going to post pictures of your properties versus you like, like this one with your, your client? Is it, are they your clients or friends? Who are they? Your clients. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome that you got them to do that. First of all. Well, I'll tell you a lot of people won't, they, they won't, uh, they don't want to be, they don't want that many people seeing them. And so it was really nice that these guys threw a Cinco de Mayo, uh, housewarming party. And, okay. uh, we may have had a few drinks uh, before the handstand took place. Maybe, right? Maybe. <laughs> um, you know, a couple of things that were really important to me uh, right off the get-go is that when you saw it, you would know that it was associated with me and that I could have brand variability where maybe my logo wasn't present, but the colors were, and suddenly you were thinking about me. Okay. Um, I don't see uh, my, my logos or even the colors is stagnant. So this year in 2018, we kind of did an upgrade of the brand. Okay. Uh, but uh, we kept things as close as, as we could. The logic with posting is number one, um, the house, showing houses. The biggest reason why I show houses isn't to um, – it isn't necessarily to directly sell off of that post. It okay. is, however, helps me in listing presentations when I start talking about what I can do with their properties. So if you, you know, if you go back to the general feed and um, you see all the posts together, you'll see that sometimes I do um, like nine, nine spaces as a grid. And the only reason I did that wasn't because it's actually that helpful when it comes to advertising the house, which I do a lot of, um, but it's because it makes sellers feel good about what you're willing to do with their property. Got it. All right. You're, we're at the grid right now. Yeah. I love that you put multiple pictures on, um, on these. It's really good, man. Let me see here. Good alternating. And a lot of people say, well, here's, here's the difference, dude. I, I don't know if people are noticing maybe because it's sick. It, it's sick in a good way. Um, first of all, that's super cool. LPNW. I love that. Um, but all the pictures that you have here are high quality. It's not like you pulled out your iPhone three right. and, and didn't clean the lens. Right. And you're like picture. Um, this looks, it just looks beautiful. Like I actually want to take a look at this and yes. uh, I'm like, okay, this is cool. Even, even when you take a picture of yourself, it's like, it's clean. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, we're in a business of eye candy and I think that we're seeing, um, some realtors go too far and they try to make themselves the eye candy. And meanwhile, I'm, I'm a little bit more uncomfortable with that and I want the picture to be good, but the homes themselves have an attractiveness to them. Um, yeah, to be fair, I list a lot of houses that I don't post. <laughs> Okay. Some, of them, some of them aren't eye candy, um, even though the photos um, themselves are good. Um, I don't, not everything fits with the, the flow and the feel. All right. That makes sense, dude. Yeah. You don't want to ruin that whole uh, feeling for people. Okay. Question from the audience here. How did you, what did, what, what, uh, what did you use to make that LPNW? Is there a specific app that you used to make that all together? Kind of so it's Yeah. So, um, Honestly, that one may have been done using PowerPoint, okay. but there is an app that I use now for, uh, well, maybe that one I used on the app. So there is an app out there that's called Split the Pick. Split the Pick. Yeah, and it lets you choose between three, six, or nine panel uh, pictures. I'll, let me type that in there for everybody. Split. Split the Obviously, you can hear my dog. Awesome. Come here, Missy. Uh, all right, so split the pick. If somebody's listening out there, type it in there, Dan, if you're listening. Type it in there, bud. And let me take a look. I'm going to show people your website, dude, because I love 
I love um, your website too. Not a lot of people do what you did. Actually, I don't either, but now you gave me some great ideas, which is, which is what you can do. You look as you're scrolling down. Now I'm seeing, I'm seeing your posts on Instagram right at the very bottom. Did you, did you have to download something so that your website connects to your Instagram there? What was it? Nope. It's all built into um, this. The website itself is hosted through Squarespace. Okay. Uh, and so they have a widget that you can just add in and then it pulls it on its own. All right. And then right there where it says the real map Brown, uh, what is that? What is that connected to that? It's giving me a, I, I think it connects uh, to my bio and starts telling the story. All right. Perfect. Perfect. I love it, dude. And this is a Squarespace one that you designed or who designed this for you? I designed it. All right. And then I love how it's, it, it goes, it flows really well with, with this. You yeah. know, a lot, of, a lot of people just forget to connect their social media accounts to how they appear on, on their website. Oh, and yeah. it's so clean, man. Now, here's the thing with the social media, it is my primary tool for helping people that don't live here learn um, to know, like, and trust me, right? Mm -hmm. So I figure it's more likely that my Instagram is going to go um, get passed around and, and shared than, say, my website. So when they start here, I'm hoping that I can capture just as much of the story as I possibly can for them. Yeah, do, do you have a lot of people message you? Massive. Five? Massive. Um, and and how, how, do those, how do those messages look? Are they on, hey, man, I really love this home that you posted up on five, on 51st Street Avenue? Or um, what does it look like typically? Uh, what are the messages that you get? It's the whole gamut. So I get a lot of folks who are like, yeah, I want to see that. Can we meet up? And I'm like, yes, oh, dude, check this out. I, I see what you're saying. This lady named Sarah Key Holmes, which I think is another realtor. Yeah. Uh, this, is the, this is beautiful, and I sent onto a couple. <laughs> I love that. I love right. that. And that's another thing, too, is I'm working really hard to give as much love to other realtors as I can and create community there instead mm -hmm. of me versus them. Um, it's, it's really good to be able to have somebody like that that um, I may or may not have met in real life, and they're sharing it with their clients. Perfect. Perfect. Well, that, that's really good. So tell me about the logo. Yeah. Where did you create it and how did you end up choosing that? Because a lot of agents end up choosing a logo that has, that has their name in it, that is all about them, but you ended up picking something that's, that's different. It's, it's kind of ind indicative of, of the name itself, right? Yeah. And of the area, which I love, man, you're identifying with, with the locals. And so tell me about this whole story. So um, everything started, as, everything with the logo started with colors for me. So I, I really, really love um, late seventies colors and color schemes. And a lot of times I start with rock and roll posters from back then, or I start with um, different paint jobs off of classic cars. Dude, um, dude, now that you said that, I see it. <laughs> I see it all. I'm like, that makes sense. I love it. I love it. Um, so I started with those colors. And then, so once you have that palette, now what can you do with it? And then there's that question again of the name. It's Live Pacific Northwest. Well, what can represent the Northwest and not end up being overly cliche or too um, complicated? Yeah. I like thick lines. They stand out well no matter what you print them on. They pop really hard. They seem classic. Um, there's a familiarity uh, with big thick lines like the mountains ended up being and then uh, we felt like if we added trees in they'd have to be thick as well and it gets too complicated too fast um, and so I started test driving different ideas and it started getting refined from there like I said earlier originally there was a house um, down at the, the very bottom of it um, mm -hmm. and we found that Remove that house, and now people want stickers. They want mugs. They Dude, want. I want, a, I want a hat or a sticker of this. This is a really yeah. sick logo, man. So, so let me tell you about the with the idea of the brand, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, every year I'm going to do a collaboration T-shirt, and I'm going to give it to my clients for sure, right? 
but mm-hmm. I'm going to put it on every bartender in every rad bar in this city. I'm going to put it on the best baristas in the city. I'm going to put it on the coaches and gyms. So my gym, the, the coaches there, they wear it. So we did this one, uh, which is just, I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, it has a, it has a beaver, and right underneath it says, uh, Live Pacific Northwest. Right. So uh, I had a friend. Uh, he's a tattoo artist and uh, another friend who owns a branding company. And they okay. said, what if we just did something fun for you? And I was like, tell me more. <laughs> and they said they wanted to design something. So I didn't, I didn't proof it. I didn't, I just said, do what you, you want and I'll make shirts. Sure they, they came up with this fits for Oregon because Oregon beavers, um, very Northwest kind of playful, kind of fun. But it's a black T-shirt, which every bartender needs, every barista needs, coaches need them. This is something that people will wear, right? Yep. So instead of giving, I don't know, one of those big box companies that want all our money as realtors, I spent 500 bucks and made a bunch of T-shirts and put them all over the city. Now what happens is people take pictures of somebody they don't know wearing the shirt and they send it to me and tag me in it online. Um, oh, that's which, cool, dude. Which is pretty awesome. Um, we've done we've done other things like uh, sweatshirts. I think I this is that was weird when we met. Yep, that was my favorite one, dude. I love that one. You know, and it looks like a construction sweatshirt. You know, it, it just looks like honestly, it looks just like a brand, but you don't know what brand. It just looks really nice. Right. So. That's part of, part of my angle of trying to figure out how do I make something contagious, right? How do I make people want to be a part of it and want to share it or inadvertently share it? Um, and it's worked out for me. Now I'm at a point where um, people buy me drinks. And they're like, you're the guy <laughs> from on, on Instagram. I'm like, yes, but I, I should buy you drinks. And can we talk about houses? <laughs> so, 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 dude, how does this translate to business? We touched on it a tiny little bit, but, I mean, do people gravitate to you because of your brand on Instagram and because of your brand in general? And then you translate it over to, to, to real estate? Or, or how does that happen? Tell me. Yeah, so it, it kind of comes about in a number of different ways. One of them, and the biggest one for me, has been people reach out now where they – whether they go to my website and they send me a message there or they send me a a direct message on Instagram, they reach out and they they're convinced they have to work with me. I'm the only one that they can work with or um, their, their son or daughter said, I'm the guy in Portland that you need to work with. You, You can't believe what he's doing. And so they are coming in with an energy about working with me that I don't have to fight for. They've already seen it. Like today's video, um, me getting demolished at the gym today. I'm not saying anything really about real estate. I'm just sharing the story and they think it's funny and they go, I get that. I, my first post of the day, I felt really great. I was like, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to do this thing. The very next post, I'm just like, that was stupid. I should have <laughs> done it. But people love it, you know. Um, but I also share things that are uh, mixed in. Uh, I just did one. I just saw another news report saying that the real estate market here is uh, cooling down and it's a bad time to sell and people should hold on. And there was a a couple of sad realtors uh, giving interviews um, just about how it's hard right now. And the truth is, is we're still seeing tons of multiple offers. We're seeing people really ridiculous fighting for homes. So it says to me, it's more about the prep of the home. But so I just fed that in. Now, later, I'm going to be sharing a post of how to make a really quick cocktail that makes everybody happy in a punch, and it takes two minutes, and it, like, I'm just going to share it because that, I did that for a party the other day. I love that. You're connecting with your audience so that they, they like you, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's right. Matt sells homes, too. Let's just give him a call. They're, right. they're relating with you in such a deep way, and I think agents forget to do that. They're, they're always just saying, hey, look what I got. I'm at another open house. Look what I just listed. Look what I just sold, right? And they don't make it fun. Well, and think about that too is um, if you were working um, – so I used to work for a manufacturer, and we would make beautiful products. But overall, nobody cared about my day. 
they don't. They, they don't care that I did some paperwork. They don't care that I closed that deal very much. You have to make it engaging. And in real estate right now, most of the things that I see, there's no personality. It, yep. it feels um, a little bit like bad TV a lot of times, especially when somebody's doing a listing video and they're walking through the house and talking about it. There's some people that can pull that off and they pull it off brilliantly. But most of us, that's not who we are and it doesn't feel right. No. Um, I, I just think that if we can share um, the things that make people feel like they're winning with us, mm -hmm. then overall they're going to engage and be a part of the process. It's why did I show some people instead of a sold sign, they have live Pacific Northwest uh, sign in their upside down and they've, they got their kid hanging upside down. It's because that's relatable. That's fun. We were doing something that was human. All right, dude. I, I like that. Let me share. I'm going to share. Um, I'm going to share this again here. So this time I've got where you've been tagged, right? Oh, yeah. And you'll start seeing that sometimes people tag me because it's just lifestyle stuff. Look, somebody tagged you on that. I love that one. Matt Brown. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, tag yourself, bro. Yeah, if you click that, um, you'll see that my personal Instagram page is literally, it's, it's like my kids, it's records, it's uh, food and drink that I like, my dogs. Um, it's nothing special. It's not like I love Instagram and I just like can't wait to post. I have to actually fight for it. And what you're seeing on my personal is I've created a plan. So that I actually keep posting. Dude, I love your plan. I just noticed it. That's sick. You know, and it's, it's, it's a little bit where people get to see behind the scenes of my hobbies and the things that I like to do. All right. So for those that are looking in on, this is about Matt, Matt Brown's personal Instagram. And then I'll, I'll go back to his business one. But the personal one, Matt, you still have high quality pictures. Thank you. This is, that's, that's really good. And what you did in the middle with, uh, with those albums, they're still super colorful, super great pictures, and it stands out. It's like, okay, I see a really nice theme here. This is very cool. So let's, let's go back to your, your Instagram page here. Let's go back to that grid. And this is a business page, right? I see it. Yep. Yes, yeah, so we can call him or we can email him. Very good. So far, that hasn't affected you, personal or business page. It doesn't, uh, doesn't matter either way. I like business pages, personally. I, I think that the only way to go is, is a business page. Um, yeah. And I put most of my energy into that business page. Um, but the, the very fact that I can say, hey, call me right now, mm -hmm. and they can click that call button. I can say, email me right now, and they can do it. Um, that's huge. Though I will say, most people just start with the DMs. Yeah, and that's one thing we haven't gone into either is if you're just looking at my profile page, um, if you're just staring at that, it can feel still a little business heavy. It and does, but, but it's sexy. Like the pictures are high quality. Like I'm going to go scroll through this because it looks good. I love it. But, but you'll see, you'll see that I, I do, uh, stories all the time. I'm trying to do IG, uh, TV videos much, much more. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do go back and delete things that I think were awful. <laughs> Me too. I don't yeah. feel bad then. I was like, Ooh, Ooh, no. Ooh, delete. No, I've done so many of those IG TVs and there's only four that are still on there. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, not, I don't feel bad then, bro. What's that? So I don't feel bad. Tell me, tell me about this right here. You got all ears, LPN, uh, Hassan. Is that Hassan? Yeah, Hassan Company is my brokerage. All right, cool. And then Home and PNW. So, uh, how did you decide what to place up here? Because a lot of agents just have that empty. So I've been changing it um, based off of which direction I'm trying to go. So, um, you know, for this one, it's sharing um, some audio books. Or this one, I'm telling them, like, hey, I love music. You want a, uh, a recommendation? I'll give it to you. There's cool. podcasts that I share. Um, these are things where it's, it's something that's very real to me is uh, this one. I've been editing it. <laughs> All right, no problem. 
So yeah, has to be me, so I have nothing on there. <laughs> so Yeah, well, uh, this well, gives me a chance to just tell a little bit of a story about why did I choose to work with Hassan um, and put it into my own context mm -hmm. as well. Again, yeah, really good idea, man. I love that. People use Instagram today as their website. They really do. If you look outside real estate, there are brands left and right, and they don't actually have a, a, a selling um, functional website. It's like they got the dot com and that's it. Everything they're doing is on here. And we, with our, our stories, you can save it into the highlight and you can literally be like, hey, this is what it's like to sell a house with me. And you can have videos, you can have text, you can show them your solds if you wanted to. Um, I'm not really so much into that game, but like just sharing and letting folks know um, a little bit about more, or more about me and about the area is huge. All right. So what about homes here? So again, uh, you like the one I've been home? editing these and taking That's some cool. highlights out and refining them. All right, so, so the home ones, are you going to have like the homes that you've sold or the homes that you have active or? Uh, I might do a little bit of both, but what I really want to do is kind of share my story with those homes. Oh, nice. You know, so one thing that I do is uh, when I have a listing, I go to that listing, I make a video outside of it the first day that it's live, and then I take my dog for a run through the neighborhood. And... I track that using an app that creates a 3D model of the neighborhood and shows all the parks, all the stores, everything that we've seen. And a lot of, so that home one used to be a lot of those videos. What but app is that? Go ahead. What app is that? Tell me. It's called Relive. Relive? Yeah. Dude, I'm going to have to find this thing right now then. Yeah, so if you run or ride um relive is an awesome awesome tool for retelling uh the story in a very visual way but if somebody doesn't know the neighborhood they may not know for example um i really like st john's here in portland and they may not know that there's literally blocks every f or uh sorry parks every four or five blocks but i can make a video and show it to them dude what a great idea man you're just full of all these little nuggets, bro. <laughs> well, I'm trying to make it different. Yeah, you, you definitely <laughs> did in a good way. Let me start. Uh, and That's so it's awesome. also about looking at other people and taking their best ideas um, <laughs> and trying to see if I can work it into our industry. I love that. I, I love that you're making this more like a, like a brand. It's not necessarily – like an in-your-face ugly real estate brand right it's super sexy dude i love it all right so what do you want to leave the audience with dude i, I had to pick up my dog here because it was it was barking crazy I, I have a cat outside the door scratching at the door <laughs> and i thought the cat would be fine the dogs are outside it's a cat being annoying yeah. um i think that I think that there's a few things. Number one, find somebody on Instagram who's doing it better than you and figure out why you think it's better. Um, there's a couple of people that I follow. Um, there's a guy, his handle is house hunter PDX and um, his name is uh, J.R. Huntington um, or Eldridge is his real name, but he goes by J.R. And uh, I love his feet so much. And I, uh, the way that they tell stories and the images and the shops that they're in, it, it fuels me. And, it, and it, it gives me new ideas about what I can do. I've told so many people about this guy that I, I just called him up and was like, we have to have a drink. And lo and behold, met him in real life. And he's awesome. He's good people. Uh, um, that's, uh, you said House Hunter? PDX. PDX. Hunter. Now I'm going to follow him. He's awesome. House Hunter PDX follow. What do you like about his stuff? I love the stories. So I've been slowly adjusting a lot of the things I post um, to be a little bit more long form. So when he posts a picture, he, he actually is really telling you something. There's a reason for it. It's not just buy this house, not just, Hey, use me as your realtor. Um, so sometimes you'll see that I post things and I I'm like, Hey, 15 years ago, I played a house show and my punk rock band was like right next door and the old neighbor here was like, we have to move. 
boy, wish I was a realtor then. You know, like just silly stuff. Yeah. His isn't as silly, but it's genuine and it's heartfelt. And he does a lot of interviews um, with small business owners and he shares their stories as well. Dude, I love that. I just, I just followed him too. So yeah, I'm just doing a quick, uh, a quick little story dude there. Um, but, but get online and find somebody that you love and maybe they're not in our industry. So, you know, one guy that is constantly inspiring me, I've never met him. His name's Michael Schneider. His handle is blacksmith, but, uh, it's missing the A and the I. Okay. So B L C K S M T H. Michael Schneider. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm going to follow him too. And his page, he's just like a designer. Oh, dude, I'm going to show this one. This one's different. There's so <laughs> many good ideas. I like this one. Let me see if we can see this one. So it's, uh, there's his name, Black Smith at the top. And uh, obviously missing the A and the I, just like Matt said. But you go down and you start seeing that it's, uh, it's very different. I mean, that's kind of a cool pick right there. Dude. That's a really good idea. I'm already so, like, <laughs> check that one out. He's always doing ridiculous stuff. His stories are great. Um, I'm a big fan. And so I'm just kind of watching, what is this guy that has an eye that I don't have, like, what can I bring into my world? <laughs> this, dude, this is good. Wow. Thank you for this one, dude. That's a really good one. Wow. He's telling stories. Yeah. And, he's, and you know what? He's not, um, he's not pitching anything. Yeah. What does he sell, dude? He doesn't sell anything. He's just having fun. He's just having fun. Wow. Dude, I love it. I love it. So that's a really good tip for those of you who missed it. He said, why don't you go find somebody that really inspires you on Instagram or even Facebook and then follow them and see how they do things so that you can then apply it to, to your business. Dude, yeah. I love that. Man, I want to I wanna have you back on, bro. Maybe you and maybe a couple more Instagram people that, that, that have a lot of followers because I think we could kind of feed off of each other and see, see what we can come up with. I like that. I would love it. Dude, thank you for your time, man. Appreciate yeah. it. If anybody wants to send any referrals out to Matt, Matt, you cover Portland, Oregon and yeah. Vancouver, Washington. They're like, yeah. there's like the, the accounting lines right there between yeah. both. And uh, he covers all price points yeah. and he's a badass. So yeah. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you, bro. Have a good night, Lapcoats.